In today's video, we're going to look at nanoparticles, and in particular at their uses and their risks. When we talk about nanoparticles, we're talking about really, really tiny particles that have a diameter of between 1 nanometer and 100 nanometers. So smaller than 0.0000001 meters across. Which means that even if you had a light microscope, you still couldn't see them. The field of science that researches this stuff is called nanoscience. And it's produced loads of new materials that have useful properties. One of the key features of nanoparticles is that they have a very large surface area to volume ratio. This is because as things get smaller, their volume decreases more rapidly than their surface area does. And so their surface area to volume ratio actually gets bigger. The reason that this matters is that a lot of the uses of nanoparticles depend more on their surface area than their volume. For example, if we use them as catalysts to speed up the rate of a chemical reaction, then it's only the exposed surface area that's important. And so we'd need much less of a material made of nanoparticles than we would a material made of bigger particles. Because the nanoparticles would have more surface area for their given volume. Another use is in nanomedicine, which is the use of nanoparticles in medicine. For example, scientists are currently researching how we could use fullerenes, like these spheres made of carbon atoms, to deliver drugs around the body. The hope is that they're so tiny that they could easily deliver drugs directly to the inside of our cells. There's also excitement about using nanoparticles in tiny electrical circuits, because some of them can conduct electricity. So we could theoretically make super tiny computer chips. We also use silver nanoparticles for their antibacterial properties. For example, we can infuse them into surgical masks and wound dressings like plasters to kill bacteria, and so reduce the chance of infection. As good as all of this sounds though, there are some issues with nanotechnology. The first is that it's still relatively new, and so its effects on our bodies aren't fully understood yet. There isn't any evidence that nanoparticles can cause harm, but until they've been tested more thoroughly, we can't be sure. And some people think that we need to regulate them more strictly, and clearly label anything that might contain nanoparticles. An example of all this is in sun creams. If we use nanoparticles in our sun creams, they tend to be more effective at protecting our skin against the harmful UV rays, because they provide better skin coverage. However, it's not clear if the nanoparticles can get into our body or not. And if they do, whether they could be damaging our cells. We also don't know what happens to them once they get washed into the sea. And although there's no evidence, it's possible that they could be damaging the environment in some way. That's everything for this video though. So if you enjoyed it, then please do give us a like and subscribe. And hopefully we'll see you again soon.